Hello everyone. This is a video to address many of the conversations which people have tried to ask me about concerning how I put my costume on. But, in order to tell you that, I have to start the video with my costume off. This is already weird. Okay, so, if you watch the live stream, you've known that I, I have talked a couple of times about special underwear. Uh, and I'm going to actually walk you through that. These are my favorite underwear. These are called ball bags, and they just got a nice snug fit. So drink that in a little bit. I'm sure it's, you're having a good time with that. Anyways, so what I got here is um, some, some special made under things that actually go inside my underwear, and they help keep everything separated. There's a, there's a, a piece for one thing to go through, and then there's a piece for another thing to go through. And then you kind of take these two tabs. They come in assorted colors and stuff. And then you take the tabs and you tie them up so that everything ends up staying in place. I don't know if you can see that. So, I'm not going to do that today because I'm not going to be walking around and we're not going to get swamp cock, as was mentioned, in the, in the feed. But, first thing we're going to do is... We're going to start out with the pants. The pants are now inside out for airing out purposes. Uh, in between wearings, the Loki pants have to be sprayed down for antibacterial, uh, anti-odor reasons. So, this is actually not going to answer the question of how long it takes to put the costume on, because actually this is going to uh, take longer than the costume usually takes to put on. So first thing I gotta do is put socks on. I forgot that step. So we're gonna put our socks on. Uh, typical white athletic socks. Second thing we're gonna do is put our uh, moisture wicking undershirt on. Ah, this one's my favorite. Thor TV bought it for me. It uh, keeps me nice and cool, as cool as it can possibly be when wearing this many layers of clothing. So, pants, as you might be able to see, we got stirrups and once everything's up and on and about, it's just a regular clasp and a zipper down there. Stirrup down here keeps everything pulled down. Suspenders keep everything pulled up. Now, I have some pieces of foam taped to the inside of the suspenders so that so that they won't end up kind of cutting into me as as metal uh, clasps are wont to do. You'll have to excuse me while I have some technical difficulties with this right now. Okay, that should be it for that. So, suspenders go on, and I got my belt down here, belt tightens up, make sure everything's on and good, again another piece of foam to keep the uh, suspenders from getting crazy on me, sometimes these pants get a little, uh, a little dusty since they're made out of vinyl the rubber gets a little corroded and gets kind of dried out so you gotta brush off the dust sometimes that comes from the corroded uh, the corroded uh, rubber material that it's coated with so the boots go on they've got a zipper on the inside goes all the way down almost to the sole button that up snap snap all these snaps are functional. They do hold the boot together. Uh, actually, the snaps on this side also function, but I don't use them since there's not a zipper that needs to be opened on that side. Uh, actually, there's a lot more boot here than is needed. I should trim this down, but uh, I, I just haven't had the time or the talent to do so. So. Someday in the future, I may end up with a slightly more streamlined boot, but no one's going to notice that except for me. So, boots get buttoned up. 
Now, once the boots are on, this is the baseline costume that I can still function in. I can drive in this. Uh, I prefer not to do too much walking around town with just the pants and the boots on, but it happens. Next thing, we're going to look at the tunic. The tunic is also inside out for the sake of being cleansed and deodorized. Um, lately I've just been spraying it down with cheap vodka. The alcohol sterilizes all the bacteria and stuff that make it stinky after being worn for three days, ten hours a day or whatever. So, um, it's not smelling too bad right now, but, you know, it hasn't, I haven't had it on yet. So give me a couple hours and we'll figure that out. All right, so here's the tunic. Right side out. Goes on just like a shirt. There's not a big entrance for it. Um, the sweatier you are, the harder it gets. The wrists are actually pretty snug because they have to have these uh, green sort of uh, arm bands in there. They're sewn into the sleeves, so they have to go right around my wrists. Alright, so, that's basically how the tunic goes on. There is a zipper right here. The zipper goes down. And there's a line of button snaps in the back. Uh, uh, I guess they're snap trim. I forget what they're called. A couple of them don't quite catch anymore. I might have to replace them. So as you can see, it's a slow going process. You have to make sure everything goes on correctly. All right. So one last zipper in the front and there's a tiny clasp right here, like a bra clasp. It's a big one though. And that goes and keeps my collars together. Next up is the chest plate. So the chest plate is basically a piece of leather. Um, it was essentially flat when I started with it, but since I've been wearing it, you know, for entire weekends, it started to get a little bit of shaping in it. Um, I'd like to redo this and give it a little bit more of an elegant domed feeling, but this is what we got for now. So, oh, by the way, the pants and the tunic were both made by Luck and Spades. Uh, she did a wonderful job and they're beautifully fitted and they've lasted a very long time because they're very well made. So certainly stop by Luck and Spades, like her page, and tell her that you love her work. So I've now got these two parachute clasps here on the sides. Click. Click. That's how they go. Right under the arms, everything stays right tight to the body. So that is what is essential for every iteration of the Asgardian Loki costume. After this part, it starts to get a little guess and check. Uh, there's some other things that are gonna change. So, uh, I'm gonna have my assistant put down the camera when we get into the jacket portion of the exercise. All right, so here's our jacket. I'm gonna show you the back of it because it's actually more important than the front. The back of this jacket has little micro tabs. These are sort of elastic and they are meant to flip around in a loop and attach back to themselves. Now there's a little loop that can catch things. This one does the same. Now there's a much larger piece of Velcro that flaps down. The entirety of the back of the jacket flaps down. So, I'm going to put the jacket on like that, the overcoat. All right. So this is also pretty much part of the baseline costume. Um, as you can see, the back is currently exposed. All this is flat down. So I'm going to show you the biggest costume first. Uh, we're going to try to do King Loki. Um, the first part of King Loki that needs to go on is the shoulders and the cape. So King Loki has the large gold uh, rigid shoulders. Uh, this is Velcro that'll be attaching to the back. 
and these two uh, straps right here are strong rare earth magnets. They're going to keep the shoulders weighted down in the front. Um, basically, they're going to make sure that the front of the costume doesn't shift back with the weight of the cape. So, speaking of the cape, next part is this. The cape has... This down. Cape has... Wonderful pleats built into it, beautifully, beautifully sewn together, also made by Luck and Spades. Um, pleats, as you can see, with parachute clips, uh, kind of tabs sewn onto them, extra reinforced. Uh, I didn't mention that the, the rigid shoulders here were made by uh, Commissar Props. This is made out of Sintra, which is a very thick, rigid thermoplastic. There are parachute clips inside the large shoulders and parachute clips on the cape. Clip right on. There's also some inside the shoulders between the different uh, the different layers. These are a little trickier to get at, but as long as they're not attached to my body, I can still get in there and snap them into place. And then this side of the cape lays flat. I'm going to do the same for this side. As you can tell, this costume is best put on with more than one pair of hands involved. But uh, right now, for instructional purposes, we're just going to try to be as thorough as possible. All right, so here's the hard part with the parachute clips. OK, that's four parachute clips, keeping everything anchored. I'm going to adjust my pleats a little bit here so they lay right, or approximately right. All right, so that's about how the back of the cape should look. Once it gets shaken out a little bit, the pleats will lay a little better, but that's about right. So here's the part that um, I'm going to need a little help with. So let me recognize my lovely assistant. Oh, look at that, guys. It's Thor TV, guys. All right, so basically, the shoulders go, surprise, surprise, on my shoulders. These two rare earth magnets attach to the jacket. And that flap that I kept talking about from the back goes and velcros to the back of the jacket. That's one tab from the shoulder attaches to my actual back, and then the flap on the back of the jacket attaches to that tab. So it sort of gets sandwiched in there. All right, the two small tabs haven't come into play yet. We're about to use those. So the next part that goes on is the other foam chest piece. I'm gonna need your help for this too. So um, this goes over that. Also has the sturdy rare earth magnets. This was made by Mal's Fantasy Factory uh, up in Santa Clarita. You can hear them clicking into place. And the collars, also, the lapels also have smaller rare earth magnets to hold them in place. The bottom of the, uh, of the foam part attaches to these gold trim pieces, which I'll explain. They're made out of leather. And the two long tabs in the back come up and around this foam piece to hold the collar against my body. Uh, sorry, my turn, I'm losing. turn your back towards the camera. So as you can hopefully see him doing. Uh, so that is holding that down and holding that down. Beautiful. All right. Next up, this is the hardest part. If there's one thing that I can't do alone, it's this part. These two uh, bicep armor pieces, I tried every type of connection I could get. Uh, these were made by Eldritch Arts. Um, I think these were actually the first pair she ever made, unless she was lying to me. <laughs> I she wasn't lying to me. So I got them labeled left and right. I'm going to do the left hand first. So arm goes through, and on the tunic, there's a cloth tab that has a snap on it. I'm going to try to lean in and show that. So that snap has to be attached to a snap that's inside this piece of armor. 
So I'm going to slide it up my arm. He's going to reach in there and grab that tab. And we're going to try to secure that. Looks good. Same thing with this one here. And if you ask Thor TV, he'll tell you right now <laughs> that I'm already sweating. I can already feel moisture and heat. You already stink. And I stink so bad right now, all the time. You start wearing nose plugs. Oh my god, it is the worst in here. So, feels good. Test it out a little bit. After that, we've got these, uh, the bracers, also made by Eldritch Arts. Um, on the inside, rare earth magnets. And you can also see left and right uh, kind of markered in there. So, I'm going to put the right one on. Inside the tunic, I've glued rare earth magnets, so this won't slip once it goes on. It snaps into place. The magnets grab each other. You can actually... Ooh, look! One of the rare earth magnets came off. It's a good thing we did this. <laughs> so what happens is, that will always fall into place, just as long as it's attached. It should be attached right there. I'm going to have to glue that after this broadcast. <laughs> so, this comes up, and there you go. That's on now. I'll make a note that I have to fix that. Um, final piece on the body, also made by Eldritch Arts, are my two little arm, uh, two little hand armors. Uh, you can see right and left are written on there. Um, what I have inside my sleeves are, let's do this one first, right. So, There's little uh, little tabs with Velcro on them. Velcro goes on there. And then I take my little bra hooks. And I'm going to secure that in there. Uh, this part of the costume isn't foolproof yet. There's another... There's There has to be something else that keeps this cloth pulled over this hand armor. And I haven't perfected that yet. Uh, I may do something in the near future to keep it from sliding down as I move my hand. As you can see, that's a problem. But that hasn't happened quite yet. So look in my photos. You'll be able to see sometimes that these slip out and show too much. If you're a real connoisseur of Loki hates you. I don't want to hear it, though. If you got any criticisms about photos, I already know. It's, it's happening. Um... Uh, so any rigging you see, any way that um, two costume pieces interact, that was my job on the costume. So uh, keep in mind that I'm giving credit to Luck and Spades for making great pieces of, of uh, costume art, as well as Eldritch Arts. And when I say that there's parts of the costume that don't work correctly together, it's my fault for not attaching them correctly together. So uh, please don't let anything I say about how this costume doesn't work quite well enough. Uh, don't let that discourage you from uh, telling those people that they did great work. Alright, so that's the entire costume part of King Loki. I'm then going to have to... hold on. And grab my helmet. Ooh, just hit myself in the face with it. Slide it right on my head. Go into my prop box here. Grab my horns. One, two, there's a whole video about how the horns work. Also rare earth magnets. This was made by Commissar Props. He did an awesome job. And then, King Loki has his great big spear. Something's wrong with this picture. So I reach into my box, and I get the spearhead, and that slides right on there. It's just a compression fit. That's King Loki. So now we've stripped out of King Loki, uh, we're going to go into Dark World Loki. Dark World Loki has these shoulders. Um, these shoulders I just made out of cut leather, and then I put some upholstery fabric over it. You can see the pattern on there. That's not the screen accurate pattern, guys. But, works well enough. So I have this piece, 
and you can see two snaps on there. The snaps attached to this leather uh, pauldron, which was made by Rasaku on Etsy. Uh, you can see one of my Tumblr posts is actually saying, you know, this is my leather worker guy, and uh, he he makes these beautiful pieces. He made just the actual armor pieces, and then I just bought some old belts and put some snaps on them. And those keep them attached to the uh, the shoulders. The shoulders also have those two same strong rare earth magnets on the on the inside, as well as one on this belt in the front. So I'm gonna have my helper come and put my shoulders on again. So this. That goes right over my shoulders. Beautiful. Okay. Oops. And like that. And then this is... Is this supposed to be up inside of it? Or does that go over it? Uh, this goes over. This goes over. Okay. So... All right, so we got those two little guys hanging down still? No. No? Okay. So we're going to put, uh, this is another, basically the same exact chest piece from the, the King Loki armor. This one was made by Commissar Props, though. The last one was made out of foam. This one's made out of Sintra. It's a lot more rigid, and um, it's just a lot more conformed to my body. The other one has a little bit of play to it. So this one goes over the neck. got our two black uh, pieces holding that against my body again. The uh, pauldron kind of goes under here and over here. Uh, again, I put my bracers on. Oh, I forgot a piece of the King Loki costume. What part? It's okay. I'll show you later. Um, and then the bracers go on, and that is... Dark World Loki right there. I'll usually have my Tesseract with me. Not that Tesseract was ever included in Dark World, but I just want to show the prop is there. Okay, so we're going to quickly get out of Dark World Loki. Uh, so this comes off. And then I'm doing here. Cool. That comes off. And now we're going to be Lesser Loki from Avengers. Lesser Loki does not have these gold stripes. So they, rare earth magnets, come right off the costume. That goes off. Uh, Lesser Loki in Avengers has these two little strappy guys that kind of hang around him. So they go over the tunic, under the jacket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This feels weird. Um, okay. That comes up like that. There's a snap right here that attaches. These should lay flat against my body. Uh, part of the King Loki costume that I forgot to attach is actually this. Uh, this kind of cross strap attaches to my breastplate here. It's got two little bra straps that hook on like so. One, two, then it comes around my body and hooks to the zipper on the tunic with another bra clasp. So that would be for King Loki, but I'm not actually wearing King Loki right now. I'm wearing Lesser Loki, 
which includes this piece right here. I used to wear um, this particular piece of uh, cross of chest armor was made by Eldritch Arts, but I actually dropped it enough times that I broke it, so I had to remake it. This one uh, I made myself out of Sintra. So that's uh, one part of the costume that I made myself, one small piece. Uh, okay, so this costume, like all the other ones, has a shoulder piece, which I'm going to need help with. This one actually doesn't Velcro directly to the costume. It kind of just gets locked in by the jacket's, uh, the jacket's Velcroing flap. Oops. Now everything that you see happening with, with the jacket in front, all the attachments are happening by rare earth magnets inside the jacket. So, this uh, is sitting about right, cool. Uh, and then I've got this shoulder piece. Uh, it's actually a completely different, this one's also made by Eldritch Arts. As you can see, it's two completely different uh, pieces. Um, and this snaps on to the shoulder like so. Then this weaves through this. I don't have names for everything, so we'll have to settle on just calling it shoulder strappy guy thing. This has a big snap inside here. And then in the back, I'm sorry, the back there's another strap. This actually goes inside the coat. There's two rare earth magnets holding together a seam here. It goes inside the coat and there's a snap inside the coat as well that you're not going to be able to see. I apologize for that. Let me feel around for it. I know it's here somewhere. There it is. Okay. So, that's snapped together. As you can see, um... <clears throat> that's all the shoulder pieces. Rare earth magnets on the back of the strap guard. Go like so, to co correspond with the rare earth magnets on the inside of the belt. If you can hear it snap into place, that attaches like this. And there's a couple little hooks here that sort of hold the belt in place. So that's held just like that. And then uh, I put my bracers on once again. I could have probably done without even taking them off, but I like the freedom of movement. Oh. I am already sweating like a pig right now, just for moving around this much in this costume. Okay, so there's my bracers, my two pieces of palm armor have come undone as usual. Then I go back into my prop box, I take my short spear handle, my short spear head, attach those together, and that's Lesser Loki. Oh, my hair is a mess. Oh boy. Okay, and that's how my costume goes together, at least all the Asgardian stuff. Uh, I hope you're sufficiently disenchanted, and I hope it's been a good half hour for you because that's how long this has all taken. So, have a good night, and I'm never doing this for you again. Goodbye, everyone.